I'm Mike, N2MAK, and I'm at the Irondequoit Bay State Marine Park. I got a brand new Yezu FT710. Let's get it on the air and get this park activated. All right, we're all set up. We're using the uh, Wolf River Coils 213 inch whip, and then uh, that's on a uh, triple mag mount. Uh, there's a toroid choke there, and coax going into the car with the 710. All right, I get the antenna tuned. All right, we'll set our power. Do 20 watts. Uh, tune on WSJTX and check. Not getting any ALC. All right, we're calling CQ POTA 20 meter FT8. All right, we got our first contact. I guess we got it set up and working right. November 2, Mike Alpha Kilo, park to park, QSL. QSL, QSL, I copy the 53 into your park, uh, which is uh, 2539, Foxtrot 2539. I'm at park Kilo 2082, Kilo 2082, QSL. Roger, Roger, 73. Okay, that was awesome. So the uh, first voice contact on this radio was a uh, park to park uh, DX with France. Uh, just worked uh, Foxtrot 4, India Lima Hotel. Uh, Jean Baptiste. It was awesome to uh, actually be the one hunting him for a change. Uh, so off to a real good start so far with the radio. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ Poda. This is November two. Mike Alpha Kilo calling CQ for Parks on the Air at Kilo two zero eight two in Western New York. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ Poda. This is November two. Mike Alpha Kilo Parks on the Air. QRZ. Kilo India four Yankee Golf Victor. Kilo India 4, Yankee Golf Victor, QSL. QSL. Okay, I got you a 5-9 into New York at Kilo 2082, QSL. QSL, I got you 5-9 into November, Charlie. Roger, Roger. Hey, well, I got you real quick. I am using a new radio for the first time. I'm just wondering how the mic audio sounds while I got you here. It sounds great to me. Good, clear, crisp. Uh, no background noise, just... All you, you sound like you're sitting right here beside me at the desk. Roger, Roger, I appreciate it. And it's good it's not getting any background noise because the seagulls are pretty loud out here. <laughs> All right, before I dive into my final thoughts, first want to recognize Doug, uh, N4HNH, and then Frank, wc 0 I watch videos that both of them have done on the 710. Uh, I'll leave links down below. Check them out, especially uh, Doug's got a whole series on it. So if you want to learn more about the radio, getting it set up, uh, do what I did. Watch their videos. Now, on to my likes. Uh, first of all, the 710 is a great looking radio. It, it's certainly sleek and, and the display is fantastic. Uh, the brightness, I love the Spider-Man font that Yezu uses. And it's neat that they have the feature where you can hook up an external display. That's not something I'm, I would use often in the field for, for like parks on the air, but, uh, but it's a nice feature to have, especially if this is a radio that you're going to primarily keep at home in the shack. Um, the sound of the radio. Uh, the sound was great. You have the option for that external speaker. Uh, like I said, with the display, it's not something I would necessarily use in the field that often, but it's a great feature to have, and especially if it's something that you're going to use at home in the shack. Uh, the Sherwood Report has this radio ranked fourth on their list for receivers. It's right below Yesu's FT uh, DX10, and 
I think that says a lot for, for a radio at this price point to be ranked so high. The 7300 is a lot further down that list at around 23. Um, and I got good signal reports. I'm not, I, I, I shouldn't be surprised. Um, it, it's a, like I said, it's a great radio. Um, it sounded good. I spent a lot of time dialing in the settings and, uh, and I got really good signal reports with it as well. Lastly, uh, the menu system. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I was a little nervous with it being a Yesu. I've heard horror stories about the deep F menu on the 891 and that wasn't the case with this. Uh, the display was laid out pretty nice. Um, and, and the menu, to a large extent made sense. I, I didn't really have too many problems going through trying to find where things were when I wanted to make adjustments. All right, let's talk about the dislikes now. First of all, the operation. I wasn't thrilled with the way the VFO and the, uh, the tuning steps work on the 710. I found myself constantly using two knobs, one to skip around in five or one kilohertz steps and then the other for more fine tuning. On the 7300, I like just being able to simply use one VFO knob and easily scan in uh, one kilohertz steps. It's a lot easier for me when I'm trying to just hunt POTA stations. Uh, the other thing from an operation standpoint was the meters. I like on the 7300 being able to see ALC, compression, power out, SWR, like being able to see all that as well as the waterfall too. And I wasn't able to do that on, on the 710. Maybe there's a way and I just didn't dive into it far enough, but you can you can adjust the meter that's displaying in the upper left, whether you want to see ALC, SWR, but I wasn't able to come up with a configuration that let me see multiple at once. And when I'm doing things like FTA, I, I like to see the ALC as well as the SWR and the power output. Also, from the operation standpoint, it's really frustrating that there's no fixed um, back button or exit button. The 7300 has an exit button. It's a hard button. Um, easily backs you out of the menu no matter where you are. That's not the case on the 710. There is a back button, but it's on the touch screen. Uh, more importantly, though, depending where you are in the menu, it may be in a different part of the touch screen. So it's not consistent, and you're constantly looking for it when you're trying to back out. Uh, from a UI design perspective, I, I think that that's really poor. And I, I would love to see something where you have a fixed button, especially a hard button. Um, but if it's on the touch screen, at least do it in the same spot. Um, so you're not looking for where it is when you're trying to exit out. Um, recording. Uh, the 7300 has a whole swath of features when it comes to recording. Um, so you can set it up to record one large file. You can have it break it up, uh, break it up into individual QSOs and Along with that, you get information such as the UTC, the frequency. That's not the case uh, with the 710. When I recorded the contacts, I just got one large file, actually two, because I turned the power off when I swapped out antennas at one point. Uh, but just get one large file and that's it. It's a lot easier if you're recording QSOs to try to find one. If you are using the 7300 and you have it set to record and break those up. Also, uh, with respect to recording, uh, the 7300, you can easily loop uh, your CQ message. Uh, you can record CQ messages on the 710, but you have to keep pushing the button each time you want it to play. I like the loop feature on the 7300. I do QRP operations some of the time, and if, if the bands are dead or you're operating QRP and you might have to call CQ a few times, it's nice not to have to keep pushing the button every time that you can just click and it'll loop automatically. So like that feature on the 7300, it's unfortunate they don't have something like that on the 710. Lastly, uh, tuner and the SWR. So the tuner on the 710 was long and loud all the time. Even though there was a close match with the antennas I was using, it was consistently long and loud. And that's not the case with the 7300. Now, maybe that's because the 710 was brand new and right out of the box, and it just needs to get a lot of this into memory, and it'll speed it up down the road. But initially, it was a little annoying that it, it was so loud and uh, long each time I swapped bands. Also related to that is the SWR. There's no easy way to check the SWR um, on the 710 like you can on the 7300. 
yes, you can key up and see what your SWR is in a particular frequency, but there's nothing like the SWR chart that you get on the 7300. That's extremely useful for field operations. When you're operating in the field, we know with antennas, everything affects everything, and whether it's different ground or a slightly different configuration, um, it's helpful to know not just what your SWR is, but but what it is across the band or where you are on that SWR curve. If you're using an antenna that's adjustable like a Wolf River Coils or a Buddy Stick Pro, you need to know if you're running long or short so you can make the correct adjustments. It'll save you time. Yes, you can bring out a Nano VNA or a Rig Expert or any other type of antenna analyzer, but then again, it's another piece of gear you gotta bring out and it's more time to unhook the coax and set up the other device, see where you are, then hook up the radio again. Um, it would have been nice if there was a feature like that, uh, like the SWR chart in the, in the 710. No matter what, the 710 is a great radio. You're gonna have fun with this, whether you're at home in the shack or out at the park. If you haven't already, click like, subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoyed this. If you got questions or comments you want to share your experiences with the 710, leave a comment down below. I'm Mike, N2MAK73. Airplane. <laughs>